The only way you can open a power plant is by having a way of cooling it. And that requires a massive amount of tens of millions of gallons of water per day. That has to come either from a river or from the ocean. In order for that to come from the river or the ocean, you have to bring it in, it has to go through the cooling rods and out. Radioactive water goes into the river or ocean. That is not in dispute. So how in the world is someone going to say it's safe when the seaweed, the plankton, the fish that eat the plankton, the shrimp, the lobster, the, the crabs, everything else that eats that it is polluted. Right now, we have food in Japan that they're not banning that has radioactive uh, power in it that can cause disease and death and because the politics are not being honest. Our EPA is not measuring any of the radioactivity from Fukushima at this time. Therefore, I'm suggesting do not eat wild salmon because it comes from the Pacific Northwest and all that water, all that soil has now been affected because once radiation goes out, there is no way to protect yourself. We pay for all of the subsidies to build a nuclear power plant. They keep all the profit, and when there has to be decommissioned, we pay for decommissioning and we're taking them apart. So that is socialization on their part to help them, a privatization of profits to them, not to us. How you make uranium? Go to Niger in Africa and check with the mines where there's no safety regulations and see how many of those people come down with radiation sickness, how long they live, how many of them have cancers. That's a part of making a nuclear power plant. Please listen, Governor. Please listen, legislators. If you defy the will of the people of New York and you do not care about the health of the people of New York, we will vote you out of office. You have our word. Right? And also, just joining us just now is the president of the Pacifica Board, Summer right here from Pacifica that oversees BAI, KPFK, KPFT, KPFA, PFW, and the five Pacifica stations. Thank you, Gary. It's great to be here today. It's worth uh, closing Indian boys and stopping fracking in New York State. And very interesting work. One of our biggest concerns is the solar storms that are going to be coming to the world in the next 12 to 16, 18 months. That solar storm will be an enormous electrical and radiation plume that goes out. Normally, when that would hit the Earth, there would be a protective barrier, and it would, like rain hitting an uh, umbrella, splatter out. It's not there. That protective barrier has a gigantic hole in it four times wider than the planet Earth. As a result, that full thrust of that magnetic storm is going to hit the Earth. When that happens, virtually all electrical grids, all electricity will simply fry. You will not have a telephone, you will not have a computer, you will not have internet, there will be no satellites, no traffic lights, no hot water, no cold water, no toilet, no gasoline, no refrigeration. The only thing you'll have at that time is absolute confusion. Nobody will know what happened. People go outside, what happened? No one will know because no one knows how long it's going to take. Depending upon how severe the damage is, it could be anywhere from a few days to several years before that is fixed. Within 59 hours after the power goes out at Indian Point, the water will evaporate from the coolants and you will have a Fukushima explosion at Indian Point. You will not hear it, you will not see it, you will not know it, but that radiation at 12 miles an hour going on the wind will hit 20 million people in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut within 12 hours. You will all be contaminated, depending upon how much plutonium and how many other nuclei of radiation hit you, the young and old will die first, and they'll die rather quickly. Everyone else will have radiation contamination, and just like those who've been exposed throughout history, it may take months or years to die, but die you will. If you do not evacuate, if you do not get out of the way, then you will be dead. There is no plan to evacuate anyone at this moment. No one can evacuate because where are you going to go? How are you going to get 20 million people out of the New York Tri-State area? It's not physically possible.
we are going to put together a program of demanding that they put surge protectors on all the nuclear power plants, that they bury two years worth of propane gas and tanks fed, fed into the nuclear plants with, an, uh, with a propane generator. So this way, if our electricity goes out, that's bad, but at least the nuclear plants won't go offline. Because once they go offline, no power in the world can help you. You will absolutely die. All right? New York City will never be able to be inhabited again, ever. But that's not the worst of it. If you should get out, you've got to go past 20 other nuclear power plants to get to safety. Because from here, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Washington, D.C., Maryland, it's all nuclear. So there is nothing being done by our president, the Congress, to protect us, except the House did pass unanimously that we must do something about it, but it was killed in the Senate. So we have to start that plan now. Uh, for those of you that don't know, hydraulic fracturing is a really bad idea. Literally, there are hundreds of reasons not to do hydraulic fracturing. Any one of those reasons would be sufficient reason in and of itself not to do this damaging and terrible practice. But we don't just have one of those reasons, we don't just have five of those reasons, we have hundreds. So why are, are, is the state and the DEC moving forward with it? I'm not sure. I mean, honestly, if you just even look at the air pollution that's created from hydraulic fracturing, every 7,700 wells creates enough air pollution of a Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas. They're planning on putting in 77,000 wells upstate, which means that we're looking at about 10 Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas's worth of air pollution in upstate New York. All of that's going to drift down over New York City, as it is already in New York City. We have 3,000 people that are dying each year because of particulate matter from fossil fuels and from air pollution. So what are they thinking? Now there's one reason in and of itself not to do hydraulic fracture. And we don't just have one of those, we've got tons. It poisons the water system. They're putting 400,000 pounds of chemicals in each and every well. I mean, do the math. 400,000 pounds of chemicals times 77,000 wells. You've got somewhere around 33 or 34 Empire State Burner buildings worth of toxic chemicals, which are going to go straight into the ground in New York State alone. That's astronomical, and it's crazy. And the New York City did a DEP, did a report on these chemicals. They cause cancer. About 50% of them cause cancer. About 50% of them are endocrine disruptors. About 50% of them kill your immune system. I mean, we don't need to be doing this. The cost of energy uh, created by photovoltaic or solar energy is going to be less expensive than fossil fuels. And it will be less expensive than nuclear energy. So if we know this, why are we going in any other direction? Why would we not want to move towards renewables immediately? I mean, with this whole fracking thing, they're talking about they're putting in a Spectra pipeline here in the West Village. They're putting in a $1.4 billion power plant out in Queens. When they shut down Indian Point, which is what they've got planned to do, they're going to be replacing that with natural gas power plants. All of that comes from hydraulic fracturing. Now here's what it's really all about. The oil industry is running out of oil. There was a Wall Street Journal article that talked about how there's no more oil left. And so they have to develop a new product line. Guess what? Exxon bought a company called XTO, big gas drilling company. Atlas was purchased by Chevron. BP, Shell, ConocoPhillips, they're all in the business now. Why? Because this is their future. This is their business plan. But we cannot allow for their business plan to be our public policy. We cannot allow these companies, Entergy, Shell, BP, Chevron, the likes of all of them, to decide where we get our energy from. This is our future and our, our, our children are riding on it.